From the moment of their discovery, lodged in sun-baked sediment and veiled outcroppings, fossils of prehistoric animals have captured the eyes and imagination of not only those who study them, but the entire world. Dinosaurs have become cultural icons, symbolizing the magical fascinations of childhood, as well as the repercussions of unrestrained science. They are the center of attention in museums, some of the most profitable toy lines, and most notably, the stars of feature films and shows. Nearly everyone who saw Jurassic Park in theaters can recall with remarkable detail how they felt watching a giant and graceful CGI Brachiosaurus walk across a 15 plus meter screen. Those from even older generations may remember the stop-motion dinosaur depictions from the Valley of Gwangi, or perhaps even the very first iteration of King Kong. Now, dinosaurs are everywhere. Blockbuster movies, books, documentaries, short films, video games, and more are taking their shot at using dinosaurs to boost audience numbers. However, the depictions of dinosaurs in the public eye have become almost exclusively sites of bloodthirsty beasts, mindless monsters, and dim-witted wildlife. Movies have a massive impact on how we view the world, and the case is no different here. Molding the looks and behaviors of prehistoric creatures to fit a movie's tone can lead to misunderstandings of both the animals and those who study them, causing a disconnect between science and reality. These monstrous portrayals can also have a negative impact on modern conservation efforts and animal stereotypes, especially towards carnivores as people often disregard meat-eating wildlife as killers, and can therefore lead to a reluctance to support their protection. This video will analyze various paleo media, and discuss these negative effects and their significance, as well as provide methods for how extinct animal portrayal should be addressed. From the early 1900s to the present day, prehistoric animals, namely dinosaurs, have always had a captivating and almost magical presence in popular culture. Their unique and somewhat alien anatomy creates a sense of curiosity that no other animal quite can. Yet, there's a familiarity about them. For instance, most can see Allosaurus as an active, large-bodied predator, even if by just looking at its skeleton in a museum. But the overall form is still foreign and intriguing. This is the exact reason why prehistoric animals are so often used in entertainment. A film, show, or documentary could show the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus rex on screen for only a few moments to spike audience attention. This makes dinosaurs the perfect medium for science outreach, as they have a striking appearance and are visually understandable, yet possess enough dissimilarity to provoke curiosity. The ubiquity of dinosaurs has allowed for scientific concepts and discoveries to be explained easier. The public's familiarity with these prehistoric creatures can serve as a starting point for introducing more complex scientific topics such as adaptation, anatomy, and even climate change. All these factors make dinosaurs a powerful tool for science communication and education. The first moving picture featuring dinosaurs was Prehistoric Peeps in 1905, an adaptation of a cartoon with the same name. Perhaps the most influential piece from the early days of paleomedia is Gertie the Dinosaur, released in 1914. It was the very first time a dinosaur was depicted as real and alive, an animal with thoughts and personality. Nearly a decade later, the very first full-length movie featuring dinosaurs was released, The Lost World in 1925. The film utilized stop-motion animation for most of the creatures, allowing for much more controlled and agile movement, at least when compared to sticking people in suits or the use of slurposaurs, an old trope that involved sticking horns, frills, and other ornaments on modern-day reptiles to make them look like dinosaurs. Essentially, animal abuse, so it's easy to understand why it fell off so quickly. Compared to contemporary understanding of paleobiology, the dinosaurs in the lost world are riddled with inaccuracies and impossibilities. Tails dragging on the ground, upright standing postures, overly flexible necks, and more. However, for the 1920s, these depictions were perfectly in line with what was thought to be the truth at the time. If anything, they were decades ahead of it. Beforehand, dinosaurs were thought to have been dull and lethargic but here they are portrayed as active and able-bodied animals. This was largely due to the use of paleo artist Charles R. Knight's work as a basis for the dinosaur models. This is one of the first times a scientific consultant of any kind was used in a science fiction film, a method that would soon become the key of making movies blend reality with fiction to help make things that should be impossible into objects and situations that seem real. It wasn't until the late 1960s when the science of dinosaurs would make any major changes. 
1969, the tables of dinosaur movement, behavior, and anatomy completely turned when paleontologist John Ostrom published a description of a newly discovered dinosaur, Deinonychus. This is the spark that started the dinosaur renaissance, a period spanning a few decades where paleontologists and paleoartists began to completely rethink their ideas of dinosaur agility and intelligence. Radical changes included the concept of warm-blooded dinosaurs, social behaviors, dynamic movement, and bird-to-dinosaur evolution. Despite this incredible and exciting change, it would take decades before these ideas would even be incorporated into popular media. The Valley of Gwangi hit the big screen in the same year that Deinonychus was described, in which a large theropod named Gwangi is found separated from the rest of the world. Other prehistoric animals in the film include Ornithomimus, Styracosaurus, Euhippus, and several pterosaurs. Several other films with similar depictions of extinct creatures prevailed throughout the late 1900s. That is, until Jurassic Park released in theaters in 1993. It's well known how large of an impact Jurassic Park had on films, mostly in regards to computer-generated imagery. It was also a giant leap for the portrayal of dinosaurs in popular culture. The animals are fast, display complex behaviors, and feature up-to-date anatomical reconstructions, such as spines set in the correct position parallel to the ground. However, it also set a quickly accepted new precedent for how dinosaurs and other various prehistoric animals would be shown in visual media. The carnivorous animals in the park are often shown as extremely bloodthirsty and aggressive, while herbivores appear far more docile and even benevolent. These concepts are still very much present in modern films, like the Jurassic World trilogy, Walking with Dinosaurs the movie, The Meg, and the newly released 65. All of these various depictions of prehistoric animals, many of which are significantly altered in order to sell some popcorn, raise a significant question. Is dinosaur outreach in popular culture doing more harm than good? To tackle such a question, we must look at the long-lasting effects that this media has had on society as a whole. Nowadays, the general public is almost exclusively familiar with dinosaurs in a scientifically distanced, simplified, and monstrous form, rather than the animals reconstructed through biological and geological sciences, and with little appreciation for the scientific techniques used to understand them, or their relationship to wider, core themes of scientific outreach. Recent studies partly attest this in showing that the public are generally unaware of even the most basic aspects of dinosaur science, such as the near 50-year-old revision from the classic tail-dragging posture to an elevated tail and horizontal body attitude. Uneducated depictions of prehistoric animals can also harm the credibility of the scientific community. Many people who may not be particularly interested in science already have misconceptions about scientific processes, ideas, and even the people that work in the field. It can make circumstances more difficult for scientists to communicate their work effectively. When disproven concepts funded on old, erroneous material become the primary focus of true scientific outreach, rather than conveying new ideas and discoveries, the entire purpose of the program is obscured. Educating the public about the true nature of these creatures and the scientific methods used to understand them is crucial not only for scientific literacy, but also for maintaining the credibility and integrity of the scientific community. By prioritizing realistic representation in popular media, we can better promote scientific understanding and appreciation for the natural world. Perhaps the most notable reason to change the way we think about extinct creatures in popular media is their effects on public perception of all animals. Monsters and negative views of what were once very alive and real have shown to have a damaging effect on those that still very much are with us. The world is filled with media that constantly portray predatory animals as the cunning, evil, and murderous antagonists in need of vanquishing. This treatment is given to both extant and extinct species, with Steven Spielberg's Jaws in 1975 being one of the largest influences in the public's perception of living animals. Other examples of vilified animals in film include the birds, anaconda, the grey, and crawl. Films that portray predatory animals as villains often sensationalize the threat they pose to humans, which can misrepresent the actual risks they pose and their lifestyles. This can lead to overreactions and disproportionate responses to actual conflicts with these animals, such as killing them when non-lethal methods of conflict resolution are available. Many carnivorous animals are keystone species, meaning that if too many are removed, a chain of events will set off, changing the structure and biodiversity of its habitat drastically and not for the best. This also affects those who don't encounter predatory animals, as negative connotations towards them can make funding for their conservation difficult. People and organizations looking to support conservation efforts are far more enticed to give money and resources to creatures like the hardly endangered river otter or bottlenose dolphin, as opposed to the nearly extinct Philippine crocodile 
or any species of shark. And while it may seem like a stretch to propose that prehistoric animal portrayals have any effect on modern conservation, it's apparent that the public often understand the relationships and similarities between extant animals and their extinct ancestors or lookalikes. Many even use words like dinosaur or living fossil to refer to wildlife like crocodilians, large birds, and other reptiles that display dinosaurian anatomy or make deep or outlandish vocalizations. It's crucial that we change the way we think about extinct creatures in popular media to ensure that we don't perpetuate harmful stereotypes that could have negative consequences for living animals. By portraying extinct creatures in more realistic and natural ways, we can help shift public perception of all animals and gradually lessen, and hopefully reverse, the damage that monstrous animals in pop culture have had on animal conservation. If extinct animals in popular media should not be portrayed as the primal and rampageous monsters we're so used to, then how should they be depicted? Despite advances in technology, the amount of information we can gather from fossils is still limited. We will never truly know how prehistoric animals looked or behaved, there's only so much we can learn from CT scans and electron microscopes. However, it's important to note that animals alive today are the remnants of once was, and there's a significant amount we can infer from them. Modern animals provide a wealth of information about the behaviors and physical characteristics of the creatures that lived in the past. Through extensive research, scientists have been able to draw conclusions about the lives and behaviors of prehistoric animals, even without direct fossil evidence. Another common notion is that realistic and more animal-like portrayals of prehistoric animals are not interesting to audiences and are far less exciting compared to more mainstream depictions. It is true that the most popular and best-performing films are those that include hyper-aggressive and bloodthirsty megafauna. However, it's also important to note that their success isn't a result of overshadowing more accurate and natural competition, and instead due to the lack of competition in the first place. Without data to compare the success of these two approaches, it is difficult to make conclusions about what audiences prefer. However, information can be gathered on many non-theatrical media depicting prehistoric animals as more animal-like and realistic. For example, the documentary Prehistoric Planet has been received incredibly well by audiences after its release on Apple TV Plus in 2022. Being honored by the Television Critics Association Awards, Visual Effects Society Awards, Annie Awards, Hollywood Music and Media Awards, and Cinema Eye Honors Awards, among others. After its success, the series was quickly renewed for a second season, set to be released this year. Another instance is the animated series Dinosauria, produced by David Armsby. The series consists of five short films, each employing modern depictions of dinosaurs to tell stories about nature and the ancient past. The animations have received millions of views and acclamation from paleontologists as well as the general public. But one of the beloved sci-fi films that sparked so many people's love for prehistory in the first place? Should they be held at the same standards as nature documentaries or animated passion projects? The solution to these questions is remarkably simple. Creativity within practicality. Despite the vast expanse of knowledge that can tell us the basics of how prehistoric animals may have looked or behaved, there is still so much room for the use of imagination and artistry. Big budget films to shift public perception for the better allowing all creatures, both extinct and extant, to be treated with the respect and understanding they deserve. Instead of every dinosaur in theaters being portrayed with the same monotone savagery, variety within designs, while still adhering to practicality, may be the key to making dinosaurs even more interesting than they already are. The art form of cinema has a unique ability to capture and engage our imaginations in ways that few other mediums can. It transports us to different places and times, allowing us to experience the world in new and exciting ways. The ability to craft vivid, immersive worlds on the big screen can bring to life the creatures and landscapes that have long been extinct. So let us embrace the wonder of the prehistoric past, and use our imaginations to create films that not only entertain, but also inspire curiosity, empathy, and a deeper connection to the natural world.